Hey homies, what's good? It's the Tominator, and today I got a special treat for you. It's the long-requested top 10 quads in bodybuilding history. And oh my god, some of you guys just couldn't wait for this one. I don't really get why everybody was clamoring for quads, quads, quads. To me, it was a pretty straightforward top 5 or 6. Anyone who's into bodybuilding should already know most of the usual suspects when it comes to this body part. Anyway, this easily could have been a top 15 or 20 because there were so many great candidates to choose from. Some real tough cuts had to be made, but I'll try to cover most of them in the honorable mentions as usual. But before we begin, let's get one thing clear. We're talking about the quadriceps here, not the legs overall. The hamstrings and calves will have their own videos. And here's an interesting fact. Despite the name, only three heads of the muscle are actually visible. You've got the vastus medialis, or inner head, commonly known as the teardrop in bodybuilding circles, the vastus lateralis, or outer head, which is responsible for the quad sweep, and the rectus femoris, or middle head, which helps with the thickness of the mid to upper thigh. The fourth head, the vastus intermedius, actually lies underneath the rectus femoris, so like the rhomboids for the back, we never directly see it, although it definitely contributes to the overall mass and thickness of the upper leg. So those are the three muscles we're primarily concerned with, but two adjacent muscles will also be factored in, albeit to a lesser extent, and that is the sartorius, that narrow band of tissue that winds its way from the inside of the knee right up into the hip flexor area. And then we've also got the adductors, aka the groin or inner thigh, which helps provide a lot of girth to the legs when seen from the front. Neither of these are technically part of the quads, but they go hand in hand, so we'll still consider them as well, just not weighted as heavily. As for poses, the quads can obviously be seen in any front pose, but personally I found the front relaxed, front lat spread, abs and thigh, and upright most muscular variations to be the most helpful for our purposes here today. In all these poses, the legs tend to be fully flexed, whereas in shots like the front double biceps, or crab most muscular, the legs are often slightly bent, and the bodybuilder might not be focusing on them as much since they're paying more attention to the arms and upper body. One more point is in regards to the side leg. So in poses like the side chest or side triceps, the quads also come into play. They can show a lot of sweep and detail from this angle, producing an incredible effect when a competitor comes in really crisp condition. However, much of that detail comes from the separation between muscle groups, namely the quads and hams, or the hamstrings and glutes, so it's not just the quads we're talking about here. This is why I'm barely going to feature side leg shots, since it's more relevant to the legs as a whole, as opposed to the quads in isolation. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's get into it. And we're going to kick things off with a bang here, with Dennis Wolf coming in at number 10. Yep, that's right, the big bad wolf barely squeaked his way on here, and that should tell you just how competitive this top 10 really was, because we're talking about the guy with arguably the best outer quad sweep of all time. This was the sole reason Dennis made the list at all, because truthfully speaking, he didn't have the best separation or detail in this area, but when you want to talk about volume and wow factor, he had that in spades. Wolf had some of the roundest quads I've ever witnessed. Each of his thighs looked like a pair of brackets or parentheses. To channel my inner Louis Marco for a second. Parentheses, baby, please! Combined with that narrow waistline and flaring lats, it was truly a sight to behold. Now, it's unfortunate about the calf uh, imbalance, but hey, that's not what we're judging right now. The main reason Wolf brings up the rear is because, like I mentioned, his separation in detail could have been better. His thighs didn't have super deep cuts or feathering, like many of the others on this list, so that's why he lands where he does. Alright, so before we proceed, I just wanted to quickly run through a trio of honorable mentions. One of these in particular is a current pro who I've often seen compared to Dennis Wolf, since they share many of the same strengths and weaknesses, and that is Ian Valier. Ian's got a strong pair of quads, with some excellent separation and sweep, but at this point in time, I don't think he's top 10 worthy. He's still too new to the game, but if he keeps steadily improving like how he's been doing, he could potentially make the cut in a few years' time. Ditto for Hunter Labrada. These two represent some of the best quads among the modern Olympia ranks. Hunter shows immense promise and has already built a humongous set of wheels at such a young age, but as a rookie, well I guess he's a sophomore now, 
But anyway, the kid's only entered a couple of contests so far, so there's no way I could justify his inclusion. And finally, this one might come as a surprising omission, but Akeem Williams is another honorable mention. Akeem has some of the best quad development going today, and when we're talking about the side leg specifically, I'd say his only competition there is probably Sean Roden and Big Rami. Those guys may just be the all-time top three for that feature. But when it comes to the quads themselves, while they are still outstanding, a big part of his thigh mass comes from the adductor muscles, so Akeem isn't quite top 10 in my eyes. Carrying on though, Andreas Munzer makes his mark at number 9. Holding the distinction of arguably being the most conditioned bodybuilder ever, Munzer had famously ripped quads as well. In his best pictures, you can see top to bottom feathering in all three heads, which is extremely rare. Usually cross striations, if present at all, are only visible on the outer head, but Munzer, of course, took it to the next level. Those thighs were always deeply separated, and despite his extraordinary leanness, still maintained a full look. I would say they were a standout feature. Here's an awesome comparison with Milos Sarchev, who represents another honorable mention. If you ask me, Milos had an underrated set of quads himself. Like Munzer, they were probably his best body part. The thighs here actually resemble Dennis Wolf's. He had really good thickness and separation, with full muscle bellies for all three heads, so Milos could probably squeak on here if you were so inclined. I wouldn't have a big problem with it, but I don't feel he was better than Wolf or Munzer. Another tough cut was Chris Cormier, who actually was included right up until the 11th hour. Again, I feel Cormier is madly underrated in terms of the quads. They were just so balanced looking and aesthetically pleasing, with all three heads essentially the same size. You can see him holding his own against some of the very best, possibly even outdoing them in these cases. If you wanted to swap out Wolf or Munzer for Chris Cormier, I wouldn't fault you in the slightest, but I just feel like both those guys brought a little more flashiness to the table. Okay, at number 8, we've got another wolf, this time the Persian wolf, Hattie Chupan. If that sounds a little low, no, you're not crazy. When I was initially drawing up the list, I had him in the top 5, maybe even top 3, but when I stepped back and really analyzed his pictures in comparison to some of the others, I realized that was too high. Hattie is still top tier though, don't get me wrong. Anybody on here is absolutely cream of the crop. In Hattie's case, what makes him special is the size and hardness of those quads. It's one thing to have mass. It's another to bring that much dense, grainy muscle to the stage. And that's something Hattie's shown us time and time again. He's got excellent outer sweep and enough thickness to do damage even in the top callouts of the open division. You can see he's cleaning Curry's clock downstairs here in 2019. Damn, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Actually, I'd say he's winning everything but the arms in this instance, but regardless, I think in Chupan's case, it actually helps that he has relatively weak calves because they make his thighs appear even larger by comparison. Another bodybuilder cast in a similar mold was Mustafa Mohammed, who competed briefly back in the early to mid-2000s. This guy could honestly be Hattie's long-lost older brother. <laughs> they had such a similar structure. Mustafa might have made the cut, except he was rarely in proper condition. The mass, the muscle bellies, the thickness, it was all there. But when you don't nail your prep, the separation becomes blurry and the muscle quality suffers. Next up, we've got Paul DeMeo at number 7. They didn't call him Quadzilla for nothing, folks. Believe it or not, I almost passed on Paul as I couldn't find a ton of good photos from my usual sources, but I'm glad I gave him a second look because he comfortably earns his spot on here. What most impresses me about DeMeo is how well developed he was down by the knee. At times his teardrops resembled cliff edges the way they abruptly dropped off like that. When seen from an angle, you can note the astounding thickness of those thighs. I'm not sure about his training style, but would bet money that Paul was a heavy squatter. I don't care how heavy you leg press, you're not building quads like that from machines alone. They had some good sweep from the side as well, even better than the hamstrings if we're being honest. I'm not sure he'll make the upcoming best legs list given that imbalance. But anyway, here's a little sneak peek with Mr. Tom Platts. Okay, I'm not going to say anything because Tom will get his time to shine, but for now, can we just appreciate that Paul is actually holding his own? He's showing some nice feathering here. 
And the other thing I like about DeMeo is that in contrast to a lot of the modern day guys whose adductors are overpowering, this is basically all quads. The legs look massive without becoming bottom heavy. It's a way more classic look. So I've got two more honorable mentions here, one before DeMeo's time and the other well after. Both were really hard to cut. The first is Phil Hill. I believe it was King Kamali on behalf of Generation Iron who said that Hill had some of the greatest quads he'd ever seen. And personally, I agree, but wouldn't go so far as to put him in the top 10, let alone top 3. In my opinion, what Hill needed was some deeper cuts. Yes, those thighs were big, positively humongous in fact for his era in the late 80s, and they had some nice detail with all the vascularity and whatnot, but no striations and somewhat shallow separation most of the time? That's a deal breaker in my book. The other close call was Sean Roden. Sean was probably the hardest cut I had to make since when he was on, those quads were feathered and just absolutely shredded from the side. Possibly nobody ever showed more lower body detail in the side chest, but again, while that's a nice bonus, it isn't the primary criteria here. Sean's legs had really good shape also, but in the end, I just couldn't find a way to fit him in on here, so for what it's worth, if this list were extended, he'd probably wind up in 11th. It would likely be a battle between him and Cormier. Moving on, Ronnie Coleman lands at number 6. It's rare for the king to occupy such a low position on these top 10s. He's usually in the top 2 or 3, but when it comes to the quads, I'd say he's middle of the pack. Now, in terms of sheer size, only one man outmuscles Coleman at his peak. Those thighs from 03 to 06 were unbelievably huge. One might even say overdeveloped. But then again, it's hardly like he was lacking mass upstairs. The downside of all this growth was that he lost some of the details along the way. If you go back to the mid-90s, you can find a few examples where his thighs were visibly striated, like here at the 96 Night of Champions. Even in 98 or 99, you can still see some faint traces of feathering, and the separation was more pronounced. But by 04, these features were gone, replaced with networks of veins wrapping around like tree roots. While highly freaky and impressive, it's certainly not as appealing on an aesthetic level. On the one hand, I actually like this about Coleman. He brought so many different physiques to the stage, it's almost like we're talking about different bodybuilders entirely. So if you don't like these freakier versions, no big deal, just go back a few years. On the other hand, his quads changed so much throughout his career, it makes it kind of difficult to evaluate. Generally speaking, I think what Ronnie lacked was perhaps a bit of outer sweep and consistently bringing sharp separation, but this is nitpicking to the max. He's still firmly in the top 10 discussion, no questions asked. Here he is beside Flex Wheeler, who will have to settle for an honorable mention. Flex had some of the showiest quads in the business, replete with cross striations and razor-like cuts. At his best, he's definitely a top 10 candidate. My problem with Flex is that he was inconsistent, not only in terms of nailing his conditioning, but his quads also dwindled in size towards the end. A pretty common pitfall to be fair, but when your legs were never that huge to begin with, well, let's just say he didn't quite deserve it in my opinion. Branch Warren makes his series debut here at number 5. He may have been featured as an honorable mention for the best chess video, but in general, the upper body was never his forte. The lower body, however, well, that's a different story. Expect to see a lot of him in the remaining entries. I think it's safe to say that Branch brought the grainiest, grittiest looking quads of all time. Dorian Yates himself couldn't hold a candle next to this, at least not when it comes to the thighs. And fittingly enough for a guy named Branch, those legs did indeed resemble massive gnarled tree trunks. It literally looked like they could have been carved out of solid wood. His physique wasn't pretty, but you have to give the man credit. Those quads were some of the most dense and detailed ever. In his prime, it's tough to top Branch Warren. Even Jay in 2010 is having a hard time. Branch is arguably winning the lower body matchup, and his legs are objectively bigger than the four-time Mr. O's. Around 2012, he tore his right quadricep, and after that, his symmetry was never the same. But Branch still managed to go on to collect a second Arnold Classic Championship and place highly for the next couple years, 
So it's amazing he was able to mount such a successful comeback from what could have easily been a career-ending injury. Here's an awesome shot with Dexter Jackson and Justin Compton at the 2015 Arnold Classic Australia. Justin is another honorable mention. His thighs remind me of Dennis Wolf's, only not as exaggerated, but he had some really solid outer sweep and great shape. He was a tremendous genetic talent, if only his bodybuilding career could have lasted longer. Kai Green lays claim to the number four spot. Kai was always going to make it, it was just a matter of where exactly he landed. To borrow a phrase from this muscular development article, the most notable quality of Kai's quads are those rows and rows of zipper-like cross striations. <laughs> Absolutely great description. Probably nobody combined more raw mass with such deeply etched definition. For most guys, quad striations are faint, but with Kai, it was almost as if each of those tiny stacked fibers represented its own individual muscle. That's how well defined they were. Kai had such terrific balance between the inner and outer heads, and the adductors as well. No aspect of his thighs looked out of proportion. My one complaint is that when he wasn't fully locked in, the quads tended to lose some of their luster. You can notice it with the trailing leg in many of these shots, where the separation appears very faded, but that's about the only negative thing I can say about him here. Lionel Bayeki is another name worth mentioning. Bayeki was basically like a modern version of Flex Wheeler, possessing superb symmetry and feathering, whether he was in shape or not, didn't matter. Some guys just have this genetic ability to show striations down there, even in the off-season. Kai was sort of like that too, as is Akeem Williams nowadays. But as for Lionel, those quads were world-class when he was on. And if he happened to show up at 90 plus percent more consistently, he might have made it. But unfortunately, he usually mistimed his prep, and that cost him. Jay Cutler stomps his way to number three. Jay is famous for his spectacular quad development. Perhaps no single bodybuilding photo is more celebrated than his signature quad stomp from 2009, although he did do something similar in 06 and 2010 as well. Probably no mass monster has ever shown deeper cuts in his thighs. There was just an absurd amount of detail and separation jam-packed in this muscle group for a man of his size. Cutler's legs may not have had the wacky, out-of-this-world proportions of a Dennis Wolf or a Big Rami. If Jay had one flaw, it's that his quads never had a ton of sweep. But that arguably didn't even matter. His lower body was so exceptionally balanced and aesthetic for a big man. Again, I'm going to reiterate the point I made with Paul DeMeo about how the adductors were relatively thin, and this gives the quads the necessary quote-unquote breathing room uh, to allow the lower body to shine without becoming overpowering. Jay had that quality also. As did Ben Pakulski, who receives our next honorable mention. This one surprised me. Going into this, I was sure Ben was a lock for the top 10, probably even top 6, and yet when it was all said and done, he found himself on the outside looking in. So the thing is that Ben had amazing wheels, some of the very best of the past decade. They were balanced and detailed, and there's no glaring reason to exclude him. I guess it mostly came down to a lack of consistency. Pakulski was similar to Bayeki in that he didn't compete in that many shows, and while Ben was at least a little better in terms of nailing his conditioning, he missed the mark on a few occasions himself. In my opinion, his calves were actually more of a highlight than the quads, so we'll probably be seeing him there, but for this one, he just missed out. You can add his name beside Sean Roden and Chris Cormier. Coming in at number two, we've got Big Rami. Yes, some may say this is too high, but after cementing his legacy with that convincing 2020 Olympia victory, I don't think so. If Big Rami can string together a couple more performances like that in the coming years, he could even ascend to number one. But for now, I think runner-up is a perfectly valid placement. This is the bodybuilder with the largest thighs in history, after all. We're talking 35 to 36 inches, a larger measurement than the average person's waist. Now, it's tough to find reliable uh, measurements for any of these guys, so I never completely trust what I find online, but I've yet to see anyone who exceeds 34-inch thighs, at least until Big Rami came along. They're so gargantuan and tumorous looking, you'd swear they were photoshopped especially when capturing that split-second interval as he's shaking his leg before hitting an ab and thigh. 
<laughs> no guys, this image has not been altered or distorted in any way. Rami's quads are just legitimately that ridiculous. Here's a second look in case you don't believe me. But okay, we've established that Big Rami has the biggest thighs in bodybuilding, uh, but so what? If you don't have the definition and separation to back it up, it doesn't matter. Well, as much as conditioning has been Rami's Achilles heel for much of his career, he has come in shape often enough at this point and is trending in the right direction to solidify his spot on here. Because I'll tell you, it wasn't hard to find jaw-dropping photos of Big Rami. When he's in shape and fully tensed, those wheels are positively god-tier. I really wish Paul DeMeo hadn't already taken the nickname of Quadzilla, because it would have been much better suited to an utter monster like Rami. Even from the side, I don't think anybody surpasses this. Sure, you could argue that others have had better hamstrings, but in terms of the quads themselves, unlikely. But before we get to number one, and I'm sure you can all figure it out now by a simple process of elimination, I just wanted to briefly mention Phil Heath, who did not make the cut. Phil had great legs, no doubt. They were huge and separated, with some of the widest thighs when you go side to side. But did he have feathering like Kai, or super deep cuts like Jay? Did he have the outer sweep of a Dennis Wolf? The answer to all these questions is no, no, and no. The truth is that Phil's quads were really good, but not really great. Most of his size from the front can be attributed to those massive adductor muscles. Phil excelled more from the side and the rear, where his world-class hamstrings and glutes took over. So expect him to show up on other leg-related lists, but not here. Alright, and that leaves us with only number one, and this is none other than the quad father himself, Tom Platts. It was inevitable, was it not? By far, this is the most revered pair of legs in history, and with good reason. Platts built a foundation that was decades ahead of his time. Those wheels would still be virtually unbeatable today, 30 to 40 years later. Platts' quads are like Arnold's pecs or Rolly Winkler's triceps. It's impossible to overrate them. Basically, every single virtue that's been mentioned thus far, sweep, mass, separation, proportion, feathering, thickness by the knee, Platts had it. And while sure, Rami's thighs are admittedly bigger, the Golden Eagle receives bonus points for his groundbreaking contributions, forever raising the bar for leg development. Considering how much smaller the physiques used to be and how less advanced the sport was, everything from gym equipment to supplements and drugs, even nutritional knowledge, it was nothing compared to what it is today. So yes, I think that this deserves to be factored into the equation. Compare him to his contemporaries like Rich Gaspari, arguably the second best legs of the 80s, and it's not even close. Just goes to show how far ahead of the pack he really was. Platts had probably the greatest lower body genetics of all time. But he combined that with a relentless work ethic that really propelled him to legendary status. There were allegedly times where he'd squat 225 for over 100 reps in a single set. And I believe it because there's video proof of him squatting 500 pounds for 23 reps. In his Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, Arnold mentioned that Tom would hop on his bike and ride for 20 miles after concluding one of his grueling leg sessions. This sort of insane, over-the-top intensity only comes along maybe once or twice in a generation. So yes, I think Platts is still number one here. But like I said, if Rami keeps it up, he might just prove to be a worthy successor. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you think of these picks, and don't forget to like the video, share, and subscribe for more. Until next time, it's the Tominator signing off, and I'll be back!